All right, welcome everyone. We are adjourned at, uh, oh, pardon me, we're called to order. We're not adjourned. It's, that's a bad way to start it. We are called to order at, at noon on the dot. Uh, I'm going to move real quick before we have Maria Stahl come up from Florida Department of Health and Brevard to item 2B, as in Bravo, non-congregate sheltering plans. I uh, may have a motion to recommend the policy group approve the non-congregate sheltering framework and subsequent renewal or modification as operational ne operationally necessary and to authorize the county manager to execute any corresponding contracts and budget change requests. All right, we have a motion, Commissioner Pritchett, second by Commissioner Tobiah. Uh, do we have Commissioner Smith and is Nardi on the phone? All right, we'll do a, a quick um, a vote on this. We won't do roll call. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, item 2B passes. Ms. Stoll, would you come up? Thank you. Thanks for coming. Head and start with the updates. I don't know who's got a chance to see the dashboard this morning. Um, so the 11 a.m. dashboard, we have 187 cases. That is actually an increase of 14 cases since last night. We continue at about a 4.6% positivity rate in our county. Um, the state overall is about 10%. We remain with 10 cases in long-term care, and that's residents and staff. We remain at six deaths. Um, our hospitals are fairly stable. The COVID positives in all of our hospitals are 12. The COVID positives in ICU are eight, and the number that's on vents are five. So that's amongst all our hospitals. Um, currently, um, the health department, we are following the Surgeon General's steps priority, and um, I probably haven't spelled it out as much up till now, so I will go ahead and do that. Um, the first step is the messaging for the social distancing. Keep um, six feet between yourself and others. Avoid the hugs, handshakes, large gatherings, close quarters. Keeps crowds less, to, less than 10, and that's imperative to um, decre decreasing transmission. Um, the second priority is testing. Currently at the health department, we're testing now those in category two, the category two priority at the health department. Um, they should call their physicians first. If the physicians cannot do the testing, those that meet priority two can call for an appointment at 321-454-7141. Um, priority two includes those that have symptoms, our healthcare workers, first responders, those over 65, and those with underlying health conditions. Non-symptomatic non individuals can be referred to a walk-in clinic, um, urgent care, their private doctor, or Omni. Um, all of those places are doing priority three and asymptomatic. The third priority is our elderly and vulnerable populations. Um, and that's really one of the top priorities of the Department of Health at this, at this point. We have staff calling. We have about 200 long-term care facilities in our county. We have staff calling them every other day. Um, to make sure things are going okay. If they have any questions, if they need any supplies, then we're referring them to emergency management. In addition, if there's any concerns, our EPI staff are making visits right into the long-term care facilities um, and evaluating individuals um, that deem to be you know, do assessed or just to answer their questions. Um, so that's really what we're doing there. In addition to those that are not in the long-term care facilities is the testing if they have symptoms. Um, the fourth thing is preparing our health care facilities. Um, we um, look at the census every day, actually twice a day. We look at the census twice a day that comes in just to make sure things are going okay. We are in communication with them daily every other day um, just to make sure things are okay. And again, as we've said before, we are working with emergency management on surge plans if need be. Um, but so far, the hospitals are doing really good. Um, and the fifth priority is to stop the introduction of COVID-19 into Florida checkpoints. Um, and those checkpoints really don't, it doesn't impact us in this county. It's the I-10 border, it's the I-95 border in um, Nassau County, um, and the airports, they have direct flights. So um, they're screening the individuals there. Um, so that's my report for this morning, if you have questions. Any questions? Either Commissioner Smith or Ms. Nardi? I have a question. Yes, Mr. Chairman. 
please. Uh, Ms. Stahl, can you talk a little bit about what kind of screening they're doing at those borders? Because obviously um, it may not be that close to Brevard County, but a concern amongst people, obviously, is people coming in from up north. Can you talk a little bit about what that criteria is um, from what you know and what exactly the screening process is for individuals that are traveling inside of the state of Florida, what's right. required of them? What the screening is happening at the borders, it is state teams that are at the borders, um, and they are stopping everyone. They're asking them about symptoms, and they're giving them information about the 14-day quarantine. Um, when they're coming, they're, the, the, and I should say, as I say that, the I-10 is those coming from Louisiana, and it's the um, I-95, those coming in from the tri-state area. Um, and the airports are direct flights from New York. Um, that information, um, FHP, you know, is involved with that. Us locally at the health department are not involved um, with the monitoring of those individuals. Um, but they are told to um, self-isolate. It's quarantine where they're going. Anything so else? So you don't know if there's any follow-up with them after that self-isolation or if they're self-certifying? No, there is not. I mean, there is not unless, unless there's, yeah, a problem. Yeah. And I've got a question for you unless you have Thank something you. to, to okay. Got one for you, and I apologize for not giving you a heads up as to this. Um, there's a, an FDOH form for folks coming in from out of, out of state. I'm, I'm sure you've, you've seen this before, where mm -hmm. it essentially has them select the purpose of their, their visit, mm -hmm. um, list the family members that come with them, description of trip, things of that nature. One of the items that's coming up today in the meeting is uh, whether it's appropriate to modify the lodging order that the policy group put in place uh, recently to more closely mimic or clone what FDOH did. But the concern that I've had from the get-go is whether or not we can really rely on people self-certifying. Mm -hmm. um, the, the end result, at least what was put on the agenda today, substantially is identical to, to what FDOH put out. But for purpose of trip, it allows business, medical, or personal instead of the, the smaller ca set of categories. Do you know if FDOH has had any success in enforcing their, their um, uh, I shouldn't say enforcing the form, but in following up with, with what people select on the form to determine whether they're being truthful or not? I don't, think F, I don't think Department of Health is following up with those forms. I think it's, it's left to if somebody has an issue with somebody has New York plates and they know they just went into a hotel or something like that and but there's no active there's no active monitoring is that your question yeah yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. I apologize if it was a little bit it's okay anything okay. further for dr. Stoll I appreciate you coming out okay thank, thank you, you so much all right let's move back to item 2a as an alpha um, I'm happy to address this however you all want if you want I can Kind of go over the concerns I have, or if you want to have staff introduce it, what would you all like? Commissioner Pritchett? It, it doesn't matter. I was just hoping to get a consensus from you guys. I have a policy meeting that we have at 1.30. I promise we'll get you out before then. Yes, yeah, so I just want, it, I <laughs> want it to know what I'm taking from us to them as far as what we're doing for policy. Okay, so, I'll, I'll just kind of jump in on it then. So I, I like this a lot better than what was being discussed before. Um, I, I still think this is a, a solution in search of a problem, but I'm going to put that behind me because I think we've, we've beaten that horse beyond where it needs to be beaten. My concern is with purpose of trip, that section of the form, the rest of the form I'm happy with. I, I don't care whether it's a second degree misdemeanor or third degree felony in terms of the ramifications of someone lies. I think that's, that's far secondary. But I, I think, and I, I think Cocoa Beach may have been on this page earlier in the negotiations as well, where for medical or for business purposes, they wanted to see some type of, of documentation, but if it's someone coming as a DV victim, for instance, they're not expecting that from them. Um, I can tell you if you did it that way, I think there would be a, a built-in disincentive for people to lie based on the fact if someone indicates that they're staying as a result of domestic violence, there's a high likelihood that the hotelier is going to call the police 
who would have, in all likelihood, at least reasonable suspicion to request the form and do an investigation, which may actually save that person's life down the road. But uh, going back to the original concerns that I expressed a week ago at this point, having someone self-certify for anything under the sun, it, it just concerns me, and especially when you have a category as broad as personal. Personal to me can mean, I just don't want to tell you, so I'm going to select personal. Um, I like everything else about it. Um, I don't have a problem with, with having this form used, but I, I think that checklist of criteria that I had gotten from one of the hoteliers in Rockledge might be a better starting point for purpose of trip. Um, and the, the bigger concern, again, is having people produce documentation that really should be able to produce documentation um, without requiring that of folks where the situation wouldn't warrant it. Commissioner Pritchett. Would you feel comfortable if under that personal spot we listed the things that we consider as being personal in nature that's uh, applic applicable? If, if you were to do that and still require a note for medical or business purposes, I would be much happier with it and I'd, ha I'd be happy to support it with that. Okay. Commissioner Tobiah. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, a couple quick questions. Uh, one dovetail off we you just asked. Yes, it, sir. It, it, isn't the, from my reading of it, isn't the note an or, not an and? I apologize. I don't understand the question. You said if they check that and they have a note from the doctor or an employer, isn't that they, they, they'd fill out this form or they have a note from a doctor or employer? Is that correct? I'm fine with it either way. I mean, no, no, no. Let me, let me correct that. I mean, those are if two. They, if, they, if they check medical or business, I would expect them to have a note from a doctor or an employer. If they have another item where you wouldn't ordinarily expect them to have that, then I wouldn't expect the note. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, for that sure. clarification. Uh, uh, Ms. Bentley, can you, can you uh, tell me, uh, I know you probably you did a great deal of work on this with the stakeholders on the, the policy group. Can, can you tell me where we are with the attorneys on any of this stuff? Give, give us an update so uh, Ms. You know, Ms. Pritchett may know what she's going into on. All right. Um, when we started, the direction from the board was to come up with a self-certification form that uh, contained uh, perjury uh, consequences. It also asked that the domestic violence victims not be required to self-identify. In other words, it would be a smooth ch check-in for them so that there would be no reason for them to have to say, I'm a domestic violence victim. So that was the first thing that we, we addressed. Um, the attorneys from the sheriff and from Cocoa Beach both suggested using the self-certification format as an alternative so that you would have three options for the people checking in. They felt that um, that's just what they suggested, and it seemed to meet the requirements of the board as I knew it at that time. So that's how we got to that particular alternative. Did that answer your question? Uh, I, th I think so. I'm, I'm just hesitant for any changes now, what that would potentially do to uh, the opinions, I know you can't speak for anyone else, but, but I mean, do you think that could cause more concern than, than what it would solve? Oh, I think we would have to go back and renegotiate and get their input. I don't know how long that would take. I think it would take an, a significant period. They were trying to make it simpler uh, to check in. Under, understood. And, but to be clear, uh, can, you, can you run by us one more time who you got the buy-in, um, which, which groups? Okay, it was the sheriff's attorney and the attorney for the city of Cocoa Beach, because both of those individuals, the, the Cocoa Beach city manager and the sheriff had asked for time to let their legal counsel review it and provide input. And they were very cooperative and very helpful, spent a great deal of time on this. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Ms. Bentley, a couple questions for you. In terms of the input that you've had from both of them, was there substantial input in terms of the purpose of the trip? Because everything else, I see that there, there are quite a few um, pieces that were struck through and reworded in the actual proposed order itself, which I have no issue with. My only concern deals with the purpose of the trip specifically in that section. Was there extended discussion with respect to that? No. Okay, it doesn't seem to me to be something that would be a, a tremendous order, and it's ob obviously got to go through the policy group as well regardless. Um, I, I just want to read something that I received from a hotelier in my district, and I'm just going to read it verbatim. Uh, it says, got done watching this last meeting, my two cents, domestic violence victims rarely enter hotels on their own, 
as they usually don't have the funds to do so, more often than not, they are set up at a hotel via a third party, shelters, church, friend, etc. The reservations are made using an alias to protect their identity, usually a Jane Doe or John Doe. In the rare event law enforcement needs to talk to them, LEO for law enforcement officer is directed to speak with the party that made the reservation on their behalf to ensure the victim's safety uh, and hidden location. So again, I, I just I think this is something that's a solution in search of a problem. But with that said, uh, I don't foresee, I can't understand why there's concern having folks that are here for other purposes have to evidence why they're here. Um, anyone can say that they're here for medical or business purposes, and the concern were offered 20 bucks a couple meetings ago or 50 bucks at the last meeting for anyone to tell me how even hypothetically it could be enforced, it, it still exists. So, you know, my my ask for the policy group discussion is if you want to adopt the vast majority of this, go for it. But I, I think for medical and business, they really need to be able to produce something. I still have yet to hear any argument as to how that's burdensome or unfair or otherwise. But you know, I, don't, I think we're kind of at a point where it's all hashed out unless either Commissioner Zuznardi or, or Smith have something to add. Um, so if someone wants to make a motion and call the question, it'll just go the way that it goes. I don't want to waste anyone's time. Sure. Commissioner Zuznardi, do you have any thoughts? I think we've beat this horse to death. I mean, I think everybody's intentions are pure. And if the self-certification, and now we have this form, is good enough for the state, I think it should be good enough um, for us as well, especially considering that um, many are closed, many, many hotel rooms are closed. And again, apostate. a big misconception is that the hotels were closed and the county reopened them, and that's just not the case. So it's obviously about messaging and who gets that message out, but we're close to tourists, and that's, that needs to be the message. So I think allowing people to certify, we have to have a little more faith in people. Commissioner Smith? I would just like to say that uh, Commissioner Marty said that very well. I agree with her 100%. Easy peasy. My, my last thought on it, Commissioner Pritchett, as far as the, the thought that we should have faith in people, I generally do, but my concern is what would any of us sitting here do or any of the folks on the line I think all of us are decent people, at least, you know, at least in the, uh, the grand scheme of things. But if my family were in a situation where I had to lie on a form in order to keep them alive, I can't tell you I wouldn't lie on the form. If I were in New York and every one of my neighbors had this, and I could come down to Florida and say I'm here for personal purposes or circle business or medical, if it keeps my family alive, I can't say I wouldn't do it. So... Any final thoughts before we call the question, Commissioner Pritchett? Well, I yeah. guess we, we need to have a motion on it, too. Yeah. Ms. Ms. Bentley, real quick. We had a list before what we are considering being personal, and that was house renovations, something happened in your home, right. and we had um, Louis listed in there uh, an unsafe situation for someone. Right, right. I'm looking for that. And can oh, we it's on attachment A. Can we maybe on that form have medical, business, personal, and then list those things out just so... We did. Personal, it's not a vacation, just and, so they know when they're signing it. Right. In item J, okay. it says medical or health care providers requiring sheltering in place or living in Brevard County on April 1st to okay. provide bona fide health or medical assistance. But this is the form we're going to give them to fill out? Yes, and it will have attachment A as well. Okay, so we're going to list those things that will... They are not listed personal. now. We could include this list on the form. I think that might help it a little bit because then you can't say personal is a personal vacation. So that kind of right. narrows it to our intent. I, I think Mr. it's Daya, better. Just that we list those personal items like renovation of your houses or something. Mr. Chair. Please. They don't have uh, to check which one, just it's in the category. Um, I just want to make sure, uh, Ms. Bentley. Mm -hmm. It doesn't sound like a very major change, um, but I, again, I'm not an attorney and I didn't enter into negotiations with the sheriff's attorney as well as uh, the Cocoa Beach. Do you, in your opinion, is that going to cause? Uh, I don't think that will cause them a problem from having talked to them. Of course, they always have the right to make their own representations. But from what I know of the discussion, no, that would not cause them a problem. But I will certainly um, try to call them before the policy group meeting. I just don't want to uh, hang uh, uh, Ms. Pritchett out to, to dry if there's a sea change and having to, uh, 
you know, call another special meeting. So, uh, Mr. Abadi wanted to make sure that um, I had clearly um, explained that there are three different ways to check in: doctor's note, employer's letter, or the self-certification statement. Okay. Okay. So, if if you guys, if we'd make the motion, if if you're all on the same consensus, that I will see if I can't get that definition put into the application. And if it's not comfortable, then um, I would just go ahead and move forward with this. But I'd like to try to make that caveat. Let me let me ask you, in terms of the, the medical or business, are you, if you are, you are. But are you categorically opposed to having folks still have to produce the note for those two items? I'm not necessarily opposed to it. But as the, I'm listening to other commissioners right now. Sure. And um, I mean, if, if, if they don't want to do it, they don't want to do it. But I, I would I would be happy to support it. You'll probably get a 5-0 in that case, if that's meaningful in any way. If you would have those those two fields still require it, or at least try to lobby for that with the policy group. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. How would would that be difficult, Miss Bentley? You said that. I don't quite know how they would feel about requiring the note okay. or the letter as opposed to having the three alternatives. In my my understanding, at least from the. The items that have been relayed back to me is that Cocoa Beach specifically wanted that in the beginning and that the reason they were okay with this was because this was something that was asked by the commission to have it this way with a self-certification not that they specifically wanted it in fact it seemed that they wanted the other way around if I'm misunderstanding that I apologize but you can find out in about an hour here at the policy group meeting I know Jim McKnight is on every single one of the calls so he could tell you to a better degree of certainty than I could Okay, so if you guys would make a motion, we'll just do what's expedient for what y'all are wanting to do with this. If they change the so the definition right there that's already in agreement with the policy just on the form, we're good. So how, how about <coughs> this just to, to keep it clean? So why don't you ask them yeah. as far as what they want to do as far as that, and then I'll take whatever y'all want me to. If it's okay with you, would you make a motion to request that the policy group consider implementing the changes that were suggested uh, associated with this agenda item, revisiting whether or not the purpose of, of TRIP needs to be adjusted and whether or not there needs to be documentation for certain purposes? I don't mind if you can get us just to agree to it. Commission. So what do commission, think? what do y'all want? I think we should keep it as close to what has already been negotiated, Mr. McKnight or whoever. They already agreed on this, and the more we change it, uh, I think the more likelihood that there's no consensus and we have to come back here. So, you know, it's very difficult, I imagine. You, you may not get a 5 0 vote, but you may get a 4-1 vote, and 80% is a heck of a lot over 50% plus one. That's true, but so. the, the other thing is you don't necessarily have to come back here. Well, I mean, the policy group can decide it. If, if you understand right. what the direction from the commission is, right. I think you're so in a good spot. Right, so that's why I want to hear, Christine and Kurt, what do you guys want? Because I'm representing us. Yeah. So. I agree with Commissioner Tobias. I don't want to complicate this anymore. We've already beaten it to death. All right, last but not least, Commissioner Riznardi. And I also would have to agree that it has been negotiated. Um, and, you know, the discussion about people coming from New York, if they're getting through the state checkpoints on self-certification, they've already made it across our borders. So I think, again, I think this was a negotiated deal. It was what the sheriff was comfortable with and what the hoteliers were comfortable with and all involved. So I'm okay moving forward. We can always come back if we have another problem arise to make changes. Just keep in mind, this was presented to us about a week ago as something that couldn't wait a day or two, and it's waited close to 10 times that long at this right. point. But I think everybody wanted it passed and changed, sure. but the sheriff decided to put a little bit of a um, um, hesitation there so he can get a better thought moving forward. So if you guys would make a motion. Mr. Tobias? Um, Motion to accept uh, the agreement as uh, provided. Do we have a second? I'd like to have one of them since I'm bringing it. Either Commissioner Isnardi or Smith. Second. Commissioner Smith for the second. All right, any further discussion? This is with me being able to ask for definitions if everybody's okay, correct? Is that what you contemplate, Commissioner Tobias? Yes, sorry for the clarity, okay. uh, lack of clarity. Yes. Okay, thank and you. Commissioner, Commissioner Smith, your second still stands with that understood? It does. Okay. Perfect. 
All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? I'll be the sole nay. <laughs> okay, passes. Passes 4 1 with me in the, uh, the negative. All right, let's go on to public comment. Do we have anyone, Mr. Abate? There is no public comment. So there's no one here then? All right, perfect. Uh, board reports. Mr. Abate, good to see you again, sir. What do you have? No report. Ms. Bentley? No report. Mr. Pritchett? Yeah, I, I have a little one here. I, I've been trying to get used to our process here with, with items coming. I think we're starting to get a little bit of a groove of what we need to do as far as this. You really got us through all the hard stuff. <laughs> so um, what I would ask is if maybe the commission would grant me privilege to call a special meeting if I need one as far as the policy board, and that way we could get rid of these underlying ones, and then I would just... If you guys would allow me that that privilege, then I think if something's coming up, I can I can just call a policy uh, a board meeting here for something that's going to. Respectfully, you've already got it for the policy group. With respect to the board, um, I'll just let Mr. Vate know right now. If she'd like a meeting, you can consider me the second commissioner on it. I think I have to. Oh, okay. So work just too. you know, just obviously you need 24 hours notice, but that's okay. it. So that's fine. So if, we're going to go ahead and then. We'll cancel the uh, the current notices that we have for the daily meetings, and I, th I think we can. I'm going to defer to my colleagues on that. I mean, I'll follow the will of the board on that one. What do you all think, Commissioner Tavaya? Sounds like a good idea. Okay, for the the record, he said sounds like a good idea. Commissioner Isnardi, what do you think? Yeah, I'm definitely fine with that. Commissioner Smith, I am as well. Okay. Well, here's what I'm thinking. Let's go ahead and do that since that's, that's what the board wants to do at this point. If Commissioner Pritchett wants to call a meeting to deal with anything pertaining to the policy group, any recommendations to or from them, anything of that sort, and please interpret that pretty broadly, just consider me the second. I mean, I'll, I'll have that standing until the local state of emergency is, is concluded. Okay, and my, um, my goal will be to get you guys all the information well ahead so then when we come in, it shouldn't be more than a five or ten minute meeting. So it's a lofty goal. Don't yeah. jinx it by saying it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Perfect. Uh, let's see. Anything else you have, Commissioner Pritchett? No, sir. Commissioner Tobiah. Commissioner Smith. Yeah, I would just like to throw out an idea that I had and followed yes, through on myself. You know, our first responders, and I've I've patted them on the back already, but. Um, just as a show of community support, I would like to spread the word that we could do two things, kill two birds with one stone. We could go to the local restaurants that are doing takeout and get a meal for the cover six or eight people and take that to the different fire stations and police stations. If the public did that, I think it would be a, a, an easy way for the public to show their appreciation for our first responders. So I'd like to just throw that out there, and if the word spreads, that would be great. Can, can I make one modification or suggested modification to that commissioner? Absolutely. I was going to say, instead of having them going to the restaurants and then the fire stations, maybe order delivery from the restaurants for those restaurants that deliver to the fire stations just to keep everyone in a little better, better uh, a little bit better of a place? Sure. Whatever the people decide. They can make that decision on their own. All right. Anything further, sir? No. Commissioner Isnardi? Um, I wanted to bring up an issue. Um, I've had some phone calls, and we've received some feedback from um, some, con some concerned constituents. You know, in the beginning, we primarily dealt with um, people going to their primary care providers. And as we were all learning and all new to this, you know, I even had patients coming in and getting testing done and we refer to the Department of Health for testing. And what we've done since then now is we've now sort of promoted a private company to do additional testing. And my concern there is, is exactly why I didn't really want to get involved with it, was, was that there was an issue with the testing. Now, whether it was purposely done, of course not. I'm sure Omni had no intentions of causing harm to anybody. But my concern is, is that now as a government, we've now linked ourselves with a private entity and there was a failure and it caused our numbers to be skewed. 
It caused people to be upset, people um, having to be retested unnecessarily because of an outside lab, I guess, that they use. At least that's the explanation that I saw. And my concern, again, is is now, like, we shouldn't be partnering with any private entity. And I would just, I'm not sure how the board feels about that, but I think that we've got to be very careful because now we've sort of, you know, given them our stamp of approval or we've said, okay, you know, we're recommending that you go to this agency or this entity and say, get tested. And then when the, when the testing fails, now that comes back on us. So I just want to say, you know, moving forward, and again, I'm sure there was no ill intent on anybody's part. Everybody just wanted more people to have access to testing, and everybody had great intentions. But this is sort of, you know, again, that's a risk that we took that we probably should look at or at least consider not taking in the future. I, I don't know that we've, we've officially linked with them or partnered with them. Obviously, any, any entity that's doing a good number of tests uh, I think the information's been made available to the public, but I, I know the folks that have asked me specifically about Omni, since that's the one you brought up, at least at the initial stages, I said, look, I don't, I don't know what type of test they're running. I don't know if it's a PCR test or it's a uh, IgG or IgM test. I said, I, I really don't know. I said, you know, you need to find out to your, your degree of comfort what type of test they're running and make a decision as to whether or not that's sufficient to address your concerns. So the folks that have given me specific questions, I've told them essentially to do their own due diligence. But I don't know that the county or even FDOH by any means um, has really partnered, to use the term, with any of these private entities. I mean, obviously people need to do their own research, whether we're well, talking about I'm Omni or MedFast or Health First or any of them. Well, and, and I'm not saying that you personally have done anything. What I'm saying is the county was also giving out that information about Omni testing, which, again, it, intentions, I'm sure, were pure for us to give out that information. But then we own it when they fail or when there's a failure in the system. So I just want – I don't want that to happen again. I want us to stick with – we're government. We stick with the government agencies, and we allow the private entities to do their own testing and their own promotion of their own testing. Because I had people even upset – that because the, count, or the, the, the health department testing was free, now they're being charged by a private entity, which they have every right, of course, to do. But people were asking, well, why, why is this costing me this in my copay, and why aren't they covering people who don't have insurance? And, and then we, we start becoming, you know, mixed in the mix based on, you know, the private entity's rules of business and, and how they're collecting money and going through people's insurances. And I just, again, I don't want us as a government, whether it be through our Facebook, whether it be through, you know, our messaging, to be promoting testing from other private business. Duly noted, Commissioner. I think, you know, Don's sitting here in the second to front row, so I think he's heard that. And obviously, he'll take those concerns into account when we have any messaging go out. Anything further, Commissioner? No, that's it. Perfect. Well, I, I just want to thank staff for working on this item, um, even though it wasn't precisely what I was looking for at the end of the day with respect to the, um, the amendment to the lodging order, proposed amendment to the lodging order. It's, it's a lot better than it was, uh, and I, I do appreciate the work that's gone into that. But beyond that, I'll go ahead and adjourn it at this point at 1233. Thank you all. The opinions expressed by any member of the public during any period of public comment do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of the Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, or the program sponsor and are solely those of the presenter. The Board of County Commissioners of Brevard County, Florida, Space Coast Government Television, and the program sponsor hereby expressly disclaim any and all responsibility or liability for any defamatory or slanderous statements expressed by any member of the public during any such period.